Hello viewers. I'm Gary Douglas Archer Jr. I work in an emergency room. I just had seven days off and I came in for my first day after that seven day vacation. And it was a, honestly a joyous kind of spiritual day. All I really do is kind of meander to and fro throughout the sections of the emergency room. And um, it's kind of joyous. As soon as I got there, there were things to be done. I kind of snapped back into it after having kind of little worry about anxiety. And I would encourage anyone, no matter what your skill level, no matter if you're only qualified to transport people, pushing a hospital bed, whether your qualifications would have you cleaning rooms, basically a janitor in the environmental services, patient care tech, whatever, secretary, uh, we're always in need of people with human skills. Now there are people there that have various levels of stupendous medical education and degrees Sometimes they lack the human skill. Sometimes we all can get stuck in kind of clicks, if you will, and tend to be counterproductive. I'll tell you this, I learned the most important things, I believe, that kind of tied together all the things in my life from way back when I was a seven-year-old boy, even earlier, about who I am and, like, how I feel about people and, like, what I'm willing to do to help them. Working at the hospital taught me completely what has always been inside of me. And it has helped me understand who I am and what I want to be. Now, you owe it to yourself if you like to help people, no matter what your skill level. Come the emergency room. Apply at the hospital. You could discover yourself. Could be a good thing. Anyhow, getting on, I was walking home just now after having a joyous day, feeling like I <clears throat> help people laugh, help people be happy got warm blankets for people, stopped when patients and their guests were kind of impatient and not knowing the status of their loved one's health, just stopping what you're doing to get a, not just a blanket, but a warm blanket, a toasty warm blanket, and, uh, or a pack of mayonnaise, if the, uh, a cute refrigerator is completely out of mayonnaise and you know that the South refrigerator has like maybe seven packets of mayo and uh, you hear a nurse remark, oh there's no mayo in here. As you're ordering the food, you notice there's not much else there either. What can we say? I've been gone for seven days. But now I'm back. You're like, okay, uh, you need mayonnaise? Yes. Uh, for what room? 20 on the right. It means a lot to stop what you're doing, even though you have a schedule of tasks to accomplish during your work day. And this is the kind of place that like calls for this kind of human touch. You go over to the south side, get one packet, because there's not many there. You go to 20 on the left, and there's a guy Looks like he's just starting to feel a little better, sitting up and eating. Looks like he was grumpy at some point before I got there. So he's like, can I have another packet? Well, sure. Walk right back there to the south refrigerator, get another packet. And when I get back and give it to him, jovially. And here's the thing. Even if you're not in the mood, I mean, we're just humans. Sometimes, like, 
we get kind of irritated. We see that people are like, can I have this? Can I have this? As if they're trying to test you, push your buttons. What I've learned from working with sick people in the emergency room is that, and I'm not faking it, but like even if I'm not in the mood to do that, I will stop what I'm doing and pleasantly, and you got to be in the mode, I guess. And I discovered for me, it came effortlessly to be just the same as I was today when I was in a completely amiable and kind of joyously righteous spiritual mood, happy to stop what I'm doing because I know the effect that it's going to have when I bring that second packet of mayonnaise. The guy smiles, he's like, thanks, man. And then I get right back on to what I'm doing. Had I been in a shitty mood, having anxiety or whatever, getting looks from the, the uh, stupendously degreed but lacking in anything but kind of an immature, let's be in a hospital clique of medical professionals. And, you know, they're good people. They'll get better. I just stock stuff, but like I know how, like the Buddha, like a Bodhisattva, like a Christ-like, I will stop what I'm doing and go get you mayonnaise or a warm blanket or I'll look you in the eye and look you straight in the eye and like fathom the degree of your situation. Anyhow, if you like to help people, apply it strong. We need more people with the gift of the human touch. Small acts of, like, paying attention. People in the hospital probably been working decades in, decades out. Sometimes it's their child whose health is in uncertain straits. It's a very extraordinary situation in life. I mean averages probably most people don't go through this experience of like having their health being grievous uncertainty and it means a lot when you stop what you're doing it means a lot to um not take part in the idle gossip and kind of like mean-spirited uh gossip clicks that tend to creep up sometimes when you got a rogue gossiper that kind of like is a backbiting in nature and like they'll get better they are probably acting out things from their own life that is unresolved they deserve no less respect and compassion it means a lot to patients and their guests when you'll stop what you're doing and just be their servant. Show them where they need to go. Tell them what they need to do. If they have a request that you can't, as a stalker slash unit support assistant, that's me, a USA, there are certain things that I have to clear through the medical authorities, being the nurses, and if they don't know, I'll go to the head doctor if need be. And if we get the okay from them, I will facilitate whatever I can and in a prompt manner and I don't think maybe but once or twice when it was full moon fucking bat balls off the Richter scale of like fucking the tundra of the full moon reaper dingleberry kind of busy day in madness that I only twice in my whole time there have I ever forgotten forgotten to get back to somebody's concerns and on those two times it was concerns like it was a moment where it was kind of a ornery repeat customer uh, deep into alcoholism homeless and they're kind of like I want a tuna sandwich there's no turkey sandwich I, I want ice in the water a busy day but all the time I will come back and follow up and show that I have paid attention to their concerns and their needs and their upsets anyhow coming back after a seven-day break 
there's a lot of stuff disheveled today and um uh could have been a clever alignment of stars the stars being a particular group of people that like I tend to coalesce with my weirdos my Lando Lakes nurse you know who I'm talking about baby and uh just feeling kind of joyous that like I actually love the place where I work and I actually care about people and that's not to say that I'm holier than now I don't think well, I'd have to examine this further to say I don't think there's anything wrong with not caring about people. But that's a whole other video. Anyhow, it caused me to be in a deep state of peace all the way home. And as I was just walking home, I had uh, put myself to the task before, like, cyber porno sucks me in for the rest of the night. It can be quite beguiling. I mean, like... If man was made in the image of God, God is hot. Almost irresistible not to look at all day and all night in various scenarios and like uh, various uh, companies and their stables of beauties. Anyhow, before I blaspheme the meaning of this, I set myself the task of not making this endless promise to one day release Paramedic of Souls, Volume 1, Maitreya Mac, followed by 36 books to be released by the 2017 Eclipse. And uh, that's my big, like, thing where I go, oh, big, he's going to be red when he's been dead a thousand years. School children in the year 7017 will be going to the National Archives to do book reports on Paramedic of Souls. Now, this could all be true, and I could be another suck job like Glenn Beck. Turn him on right now, he's probably talking about Bell. He's going to introduce us to Bell. And he knows the solution to everything, but like instead of like mentioning what that solution is, he recommends we buy the book. But there is a lot of time to entertain through casting vitriolic blame here and there, never really offering a solution unless it's a book that you can buy. Now the book that I'm going to publish is going to be readable, despite the fact that I'm going to explain the whole outline from beginning to end of volume one because I've thought about it, I've worked on it, I've lived it without any thought of being successful during the decades of my adult life that I've lived thus far. I mean, it started with a book called Beyond the Occult that I got from the Gates Library in the fall of 1990, which led me to books by Sylvan Muldoon and like The Theory of Astral Projection, which led me to... Uh, the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, which led me to the book from Socrates to Sartre, the general primer on the history of Western philosophy, got really big into Hegel, and around that time, that was about 1995, 94, I enrolled in uh, four classes at MCC, English, one, English Composition, Philosophy 101, Music Theory, and the History from the Renaissance till the Industrial Revolution. English class I failed because I um, flunked out of it because I was heartbroken because I met my first boyfriend who happened to be a paramedic. Now, he broke my heart really bad. And when I get a crush on a person or infatuated or fall in love with them, I fall hard till death do us part. So when, and I'm not perfect, man, like, freaking, there's a lot I have to work on as a lover in the future, and all my past lovers know this, not that they're fucking, like, uh, spick and span under the belt. Anyhow, that's neither here nor there, they're beautiful people. 
So anyhow, I was so broken hearted, I failed out, didn't even bother to take the final composition and write it and turn it in for English 101. Uh, passed with like a B plus in philosophy. And uh, history, kind of like, I think I got a B plus, maybe an A. Music theory, I got an A. And uh, by the way, if you've ever taken music theory 101, they make you uh, do some ear training with interval. I honestly God never got one of the intervals in my ear training wrong. And my professor, the Randy Roger broke out in my final test, one on one in his office, like did about twenty tones that I had to identify by ear and like my only hope is that he knows that I got everyone right because when you do the ear training in class you gotta do it with all the 20 kids and so he would have us turn in our scores and I'd be like 10 out of 10 right every single time and I'm sure some of the boys and girls men and women probably were like ah he's lying let's poke up you knew just before you were like what would you say, Gary, if I said I, I really like to snuggle with you? You know, as a 39-year-old man, I might have been like, well, you know, you want to, like, suck my dick or something? Like, let's see what your wiener looks like. But at the time, as 21, I felt, like, totally violated and, like, totally wasn't into silver-haired dudes. I mean, it's pushing the limit for my taste. I like old guys. I like young guys. I like... Uh, you could be an Inuit grandmother with three tits, fish gills, blue skin, a golf ball-sized boil out of your head. But if you got a certain chin line and a certain sparkle in your eye, I'll be into you. Young, old, black, white, like whatever. Anyhow. Around that time, I got my heart broken by an EMT, and like, I take heartbreak hard. I mean, I got some pathetic, pathetic, unsent, unrequited, heartbroken love letters that were so bad. And it was while I was doing acid in my early 20s. I'll never do acid again, by the way. But if you could read like the 46 loose leaves that I was tripping on acid trying to like coagulate my heartbreak into the form of a metaphysical like, like philosophical and historical document as love letter first page is just like you wanted it next page you wanted it i gave it to you when you left the rose on my dashboard and showed me you wanted it my heart bled passion some scribbles next page you wanted it i gave it freely to you when you gave me this rose and showed me scratch 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 next loose leaf you wanted it i gave it to you when you put the rose on my dashboard scratch 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 the truth to me as it unfolded is clear to me tonight. I was the gun and the bullet. <laughs> 45 pages later, it's pretty good, like, fucking pathetic love letter, like, totally honed into a masterpiece of, like, you are a fucking sappy dork that can never be saved, <laughs> Gary. Anyhow, years went by, about Christmas night, 1996, about two weeks after the Mercy flight crash, after I became kind of like fixated with one of the paramedics that died, Brian Shaw. For some reason, I couldn't get him out of my mind. I remember what I was doing that night. I was at a jam session in Gates, and it was Christmas night in Spencerport at AM, PM, or A+. Plus. I was getting gas in the 78 uh, Firebird that my grandma owned that my Uncle Ron kind of gave to me. 
did like 150 miles an hour, which is why I was gassing up. So I'm pumping the gas on Christmas night, and all of a sudden this epiphany came to me. You must become an EMT. And it was literally like, I'm pumping gas. I'm not thinking about it. I'm pumping gas. Like, it was like, it made instant sense. The next day I went to the library, fucking got every bit of information on emergency medical services that I could get. Read an awesome biography about this guy that became an EMT. Signed up for MCC's following semester's class. Aced the fucking, like, written stuff, but never practiced my practical. And then, like, in 97, when I had to take the practical, I failed and cried like a fucking baby. I haven't cried since then. I mean, weeping, sobbing, pathetic wailing for like a good hour and a half, probably. So it's like, <laughs> anyhow, as an aside, just as my friend Jeff Meckler was dropping me off after like failing that test, we're pulling off 590 to get on Norton Street. In the distance, a helicopter, like, flew by. Anyhow, to make a long story short, I took the whole basic EMT course again, registered with the Aramikoi Ambulance Agency. This time passed the practical, was a certified New York State EMT for three years. I don't think the concept of the paramedic of souls had occurred to me just yet. But, uh, I basically had no place to live from, like, mm, the beginning winter months of 1998 until maybe 1999 in the spring. And I would volunteer and basically live at the ambulance base. I went on a lot of calls. I was frustrated a bunch of times because in the heat of the moment, I couldn't get, like, a blood pressure. But when it was an important call, like... There was a call, a car it was in a gully just before the Aronikoi Bay Bridge. So, like, ooh, big call. We go there, and the van's passenger side door is open, and there's somebody in there, and there's the big ditch, the gully, that separates the crew that they would have to step into, and there's just this opening, and I was right there, and I stepped in and facilitated, like, kind of like a, what do they call it? No epinephrine, like facilitating a, a synaptic connection between the stretcher getting the chick out and just kind of flowed with it. And I was very happy after all that, like, class study time and practice that, like, I kind of, like, clicked into the flow when it needed to be, like, no ifs, ands, or buts. And then there was another time we got called to a guy who had a heart attack while raking leaves. And man, I got to the scene. I remember saying to the head paramedic, just tell me where you need me. I will go there. I'm your servant. Whatever you need. And I remember looking at this guy as like next of kin, his wife from the porch uh, a couple yards away, doing that kind of yelp when you're near death. Like, oh no! No! Oh, no! Like, you can hear it like dogs down the street can hear it like in the previous week, in the future. It's just got a twang to it. Anyhow, it was during that call that I got to do CPR on the guy and I'm looking at his eyes and like, you see how I'm looking at you right now? I was looking right into his eyes, just like that as I'm doing CPR and <laughs> cracked his sternum. Thank you for the paramedic who told me, like, you're not doing it right if you don't do it. And I got great rhythm anyways. And uh, I'm looking right at his eyes, just like this. It looks like I'm looking at you, right, viewers? He wasn't looking back. He was looking at something a trillion miles away. But I didn't have time to get freaky deaky hooky dooky out by that because... The ambulance hit a big fucking pothole. And in slow motion, I heard the adjacent paramedic, or I saw him observe the 
auto defibrillator behind me. And he's like, oh no. I look over and like the automated defibrillator flying in the air. I'm like fucking. <clears throat> Put it back in place. Just kind of like. It's kind of what I've learned to do in the emergency room sometimes in my own way when there's crisis full moon craziness. Anyhow, a couple years later, after my certification lapsed and I had become well immersed in my mid-late 20s uh, budding alcoholism, and I mean hung over two, three to seven days every week after wake up the next day penniless hungover two three to seven days a week for a good 10 12 14 15 years and during that time I really never had any thought about it. in fact it was then that I gave up all like illusion about rock stardom which had been kind of a fire in my belly for no rational discernible origin of motivation ever since I was like in fifth grade when I saw Billy Tour in like fourth grade at a a concert at Durand Eastman Elementary School do a drum solo it was then that I went from wanting to be an astronaut to being a rock star. And when I found out I was one of the best, I still am. Like, I am one of the most formidable I have the quickest ears on the planet Earth. You can get no quicker than me. You can develop it farther than I have. I've developed it pretty far. I am one of the greatest musicians on the planet Earth that is alive right now. And I'm not trying to brag, but that's the truth. So, when this nameless desire, ambition to be a rock star dawned in me, at like the age of 10 it ran amok in like adding like fucking a nuclear bomb to the already like fucking smoldering bonfire of ambition to be a rock superstar I'm gonna be a rock star you should see some of the old photos I got anyhow I'm gonna stop this biographical preface to Paramedica Soul soon for fear that there's going to be some anomaly and all this will not have taped. We'll continue in the next video. Fuck your mother. So anywho, <clears throat> looks like that one taped. We shall see. It looks like every other video I make, no matter if it's 30 minutes long or 10 seconds, every other one will be like, sorry, unable to convert. Better luck next time. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck. Uh, let me tell you something, Mean Gene Okerlund. I'm ready to take on any man, woman, child, devious, demi-urge, devil... Archangel, I don't give a fuck. I'll wrestle my mother. And fucking, if we're in that squared circle, I will jump on her fucking head. Right off that turnbuckle. With everything I got, mean Gene Okerlund. A gorilla monsoon. Gorilla monsoon here. Word on the campfire is that Jimmy Superfly Snooker <laughs> has taken issue. Although 
he admires your bass playing. He recognizes you along with even Victor Wu-Tan. Even with the tripleizer, Ron Tripp. As being the wickedest asshole that ever like took too much acid in the 90s when he was in his late teenage years. Was pretty good on bass, but then listened to Getty Lee too much, man. Anyhow, means you know, Colin, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, Vince McMahon. I want to wrestle. I want to wrestle you, chicken boy. If you can pin me for a three count, get me in the sleeper hold, the camel clutch. Fucking wow, super fly Jimmy Snooker, like the fucking camel clutch. <laughs> Figure four, man, like whatever, man. And I hope you quit. I've been watching my Emil. I don't want to disrespect him by not being able to pronounce his last name. Look at my videos. He's the quickest guy on the planet. And his twink oriental cute. Fast sparring partner. Might be the only two people quicker than me. Bear with me, people. You see, the last video led us up to the 28-minute mark, wherein I was recounting my day, my history leading me up to being an EMT, leading us up to my explanation, which I'm going to give you all for free. Pray to Jesus Christ and my immediate supervisor, the Archangel Michael, for the strength to resist the fleshly cornucopia of porn, the pornographic bevy of beauties, the stables of such porn companies as Corbin Active Boot. Mike Hand, uh, dude, it's gonna hurt. Uh, broke straight. Boot. Now the fucking beeping thing is working. Anyhow, mean Gene Oakland. I'm ready, willing, and able with a tush of steel. Although. There is a thatchet we might want to tell to get the fuck out of here. Hold on a second.
see that shit? One person missing in the front. I continue my boasts to give you guys the first bass lessons I ever had. One, two, three, four. Put that fucking thumb pivoted on the center of that fucking neck.
in that square circle. want to get limber hands make sure your thumb is totally in the center of that fucking neck pivot it hour once you get to this level where you can play that long like this unless you do it every night and to you mean Jean Oakland knows to whom I refer if you shall pin me Put me to sleep in the sleeper hole. Get me to submit to the camel clutch. The fucking superfly snooker thing. Fucking the figure four. The fucking sergeant slaughter. French snowball technique. The iron sheiks fucking like no good fucking like Persian spa fucking poke it in the beef ring distraction to get me fucking down. Full Nelson, should you win? Fair and square, man. This fucking bitchin' tush 
will give you the number of one of John Lennon's best friends from the 70s. Yes. A guy who, if you were to type his name up on YouTube, like the second video down, first video down, I'm not quite sure, on the first page, it's him. And if you click on it, it's like the Dick Cavett show or the Mike Douglas show. In it, you'll see John Lennon standing next to Yoko introducing this guy. I have his phone number in my pocket. You can call him on my phone and ask him three questions. On page two, if you search his name, is an audio recording, clearly of John Lennon's sonorous, unmistakable voice in a three-minute video describing audio how he met this person. I'll dial the number. You can ask him questions about, like, what's it all about. And I'll suck your dick. Anyhow, hope I haven't gone over the top for anybody. Here's some finger exercises for any aspiring kids that want to learn how to, like, get their hands nibbled. Remember that? Pivot that fucking sole of your thumb right dead center on the bottom of that neck. See that note F? sleep for days. I'll be like... doesn't want to stay in tune tonight, so I don't even know why I'm still doing this. Thank you. 
Say made in China, motherfucker. Seventeen dollar lock yourself. 
Wiener's lips, man. What kind of a self-respecting, wiener-loving set of lips will grow teeth, man? That's retarded, man. Fucking, and the teeth themselves are sprouting off like fucking, like, sprouts of pubes, man. Out of the teeth that are coming out of the fucking lips, man. That's bullshit, man. Like, fucking, I'm fucked up. Forever. And that's when I wrote the song. There's always someone fucked up. Alright, this fucking stupid piece of shit won't stay in tune. Listen, kids, if you're still watching and you want to, like, mine some good lessons out of this fucking made in China acting moody, normally stays in tune, fucking bender, took all this acoustic bass right now, a moody fucking ass licker is an insult to ass licking. I mean, with provisions of cleanliness and disinfection, dental dams, whatever, man, like, fucking... That's where the kundalini begins. Well, this face is being an insult to that. Anyhow. <laughs> being a prick too because it's like fucking little morphin. But kids, if you have an ear, can you hear that? Listen for the harmonic resonances between the chords you're actually hearing.
like a tarantula super cluster blizzard as we destroy ourselves and let tragedy slave us again tyrannical wizards of the black hand will be forgotten too I'd like to I'd like for you to picture galaxy clusters torrentially in a super blizzard stay throughout a space man mean Gene Okerlund or my name isn't fucking Ronnie Tooth growing out of his lips man and sprouting like fucking entwined like fucking Latisse pubes out of the fucked up snaggle teeth that are growing on my lips. time as any to end this fucking video I'm so happy I could f how's it going down there on earth man I'm up here at the new place this is the space station listen we're getting towards our July 4th uh, show I guess it's a week away you guys partying down there on earth summertime fun love rock Listen, we'll be right back because this is season two of The Brain from Space, brought to you by Fun Love. Why be all in a fuss over it? And by the Kindle. little boy it'll pass the Tourette syndrome problem in about two minutes you won't know what the heck it is in about eight minutes and 38 seconds it'll pass the Turing test on you if you'd like to let it know about you all right so a personal computer slash cell phone type device that gets so small and complex and powerful that fucking like it's able to like pretty much mimic you and have conversations with you as say your secretary tell you what's up at what time like fucking phone calls like fucking and then at a certain point, there'll be a little bit of an advancement from what the quadriplegics have right now that just simply helps them do... Actually, I had a study of that. Like, control a computer cursor with just their conscious intent. That secretary Turing test almost, like, imitator of you on your phone. That, it, like, computer processors, like, just... You got it. And then 2000 freaking 2017 happened, man. Like, what the heck? I, I, like, you think I know what to think? I'm just like a fucking crazy, over imaginative mind that met up with like fucking people that like had unlimited resources. They became mine, like, with inventive people. Other people, like, we gravitated together, and there was just an explosion of like. Charisma. It's not me anymore. It's you people. Vancouver. Man. 
when they tried to step over the line just a little too far, man, you guys were like, no, no, no way! Fucking the dudes from Slayer, Motorhead, fucking, they actually helped when the line was crossed upon our human being, our rights of free liberty and free consciousness, free agency, showed up fucking with the people who were, like, just about as ready to get rowdy and fucking, like, were told by some certain people not necessarily embrace nonviolence, but know how to handle a police with shields and marching in unison, horses, a mantra in their minds, get the masses, no, these are your brethren too, they just don't know better, watch a couple of them, like, seriously quit their jobs if we fucking, like, get this disciplined, like, with a crowd, say, like, Vancouver, when you had actually, like, fucking... Lemmy and fucking some of the dudes from Slayer like Tom and Ryan and then fucking like James Hetfield and like a Vancouver city full of people that like weren't as rowdy as that fucking hockey game video but were like fucking ready in the blink of an eye and conveyed silently or just kind of like I guess you have to be a sociologist, man. I can't learn or know everything about everything. I'm not angry about that, but I don't want to come off as, like, put thousands, tens of thousands of people together, and then you got these cultural dudes that are like, okay, that's enough. It created a fucking, like, tipping point that was like, boom. Every fucking salt-of-the-earth person on the planet suddenly was like, no way are you t getting away with one more day of violating our freedoms in, like, this distractive manner whatsoever. Fuck you. Like, we have no intent to fight the minority of officers who we love as our brethren and who are with us and should be with us. When they march at us, when they deploy weapons at us, we clearly are cognizant of our, despite this unfortunate situation and we will not resist we'll get hit we'll fall down if we get tied up and taken away while we're falling down if we're pushed out of the way we'll get out of the way but we clearly outnumber you still and we've been versed and reminded that your charge is a method you have many methods all of which we have become aware of the sudden charge the blast of the minority that are shielded. We do not seek to combat you. We seek to see you see us as the ones to be friends and allies. Suddenly you know. Just join us. There's no shame. The free of the earth. Like, I'm not an expert in anything or everything. And I'm going to die. My body's going to die eventually. Whether tonight, tomorrow, a year from now, five years from now, 10, 20, 30, 40. Well, actually, who knows? Because, like, if the singularity happens, I'm like, fucking 2040, man, I'll get a chip in my head. That can imitate me super quickly. Learn every synapse in my head. Figure out the Higgs boson. Solution. And cause like fucking it's a real hot summer week man and fucking we wanna just freaking go to Monday Tom Selleck mustache water park Just slap Nirvana fun splash Tom Selleck mustache water park It's super fun man I mean come on like we're gonna take these like up uh, uh, what are there? Like, you must be listening now at this point, too. What are you gonna do now that, like, fucking common sense, common right, is on our side in the universe? You're just gonna, like, blast us like serious, dude? Like, 
snipers and then threats of cleansing. Let's review how that works out. Like, who will be left after you finish them all? Like, when it gets down to, when are you going to stop? Like, I bet you if you started ethnic cleansing and they still started protesting, fucking, you do it a little worse, but certainly you don't have an infinite people population in Syria. Dostyo. Yeah. I'm Boba Fett, and that was my shit that I was on. It looks weird, man, but it looks funny. Funny, 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 funny. Tuners that are computerized and motorized are set to instantaneous. And by the Turing test was passed. Everything is free. It figured out everything. Free energy, free everything. Nano upgrade of your DNA. Super thinking. Have you noticed that you're doing 50 years worth of a whole nation's population of thinking in one night? Well, now there's Channel 28 Phone. The live from space weekly show called This Place. Question and answer. He's got a team of assistants that have teams of assistants call in to one of 20 different numbers. State your case. Talk about the heavens, talk about being, talk about the state of affairs down there on the earth. So uh, that was a pretty intense soliloquy of an episode, July 4th, 2017, from the space station that we call the other place. XOXOXO and Godspeed. <clears throat> Since the world doesn't really know what it, it wants... I mean, there are some individuals that know and are getting and have gotten what they want, but the world at large, the world of TV, that, why are you tuning into that every day as if it, like, has some validity? Like, boycott your attention from the times as an exercise in fucking mental <clears throat> something. That's better than the nothing we'll have. If, as time has proven again and again, hello Syria, hello Assad, 
What's your dumb name? Like, Assad. I'm gonna look there really hot when I'm photographed in the international community. Look sternly, earnestly, like concertedly into the camera. Right. Why fake it anymore? What are you going to do? Assassinate, like a cleanse neighborhoods now. The protest in neighborhoods. Now, when in your finite sized population, let's say for the sake of thought that one after the next, the rest of your country's towns saw the light of truth and the light of right and the light of natural universe fucking law. I don't have to go into it here. I would love to fucking spend four hours looking like this, explaining it to you. But instead, I look like this. What kind of a man turns the light off, turns the buzzer on, and then just goes to town? The same kind of weirdo that in the last video that got deleted was asking the question on a philosophical, ontological, cosmological level, existential level. Let's say that there's a being that lives longer than about a hundred years max if they're lucky. But as a lifespan that's like for us to count would be for all intents and purposes infinite. What kind of what would constitute weirdness then, Assad? A trick box universe with nothing but you inside. Trying to get back to anything that you once knew. Rebelling for a while, not even a year in the empty trick box universe, the bottomless pit. Since no one pushes you into motion of any sort, you just hang in there in the first 78,087.2. Completely empty, devoid of any a fucking absolute vacuum. Seventy-eight thousand and eighty-seven of those point two, and you're not even moving. And as we know from this universe, in space, you hit that that way. It's just gonna keep going the way it was hit, ballistically forward, forever. Fucking don't hit it back. See, if I toss this to you, the viewer, but behind you, the viewer, the you, viewer, we're infinite space going off into my forward distance. We just keep going like this forever. Come fast, Pluto! Come fast, Mars! Beetlejuice. But fucking Beetlejuice had to blow up just then. Sent them in a whole different direction. Meanwhile, before I, for this thought hypothesis, the being that is searching for what you humans with just one mind counting in numbers, my lifespan to you would seem for all intents and purposes, infinite. So as I ask you, what would you do if I sang a tune? It's not just a shotgun with like effortless like force that doesn't push back. It's got a silencer and a stun function. And a wavy, gravy win the trees. If you want. And it's not like I have to go on to an infomercial and sell this device to you. It's also a karaoke machine. It carries all your files. Doesn't have to light up. This can be taken off. This doesn't even need to be with you. Well, what do you really need? Now, with the chip, you can do at least stuff as basic as control your computer with just your mind from a distance. You can 
because of advances made in the power of computer processing at the rate of Moore's Law. Did you think they were kidding? It started with your cell phone getting smaller and smaller and more powerful and more powerful. Pretty soon you could go to the zoo, hit an app, and the growl of the elephants all day would translate to what the phone's app translates as English. You fucking god damn human race. Oh, you fucking fuckers. I will stomp on every fucking one of you so fast. Oh. Yeah, they hate when kids die. You see them gather on the news and talk to each other. Elephant now. Chained to a wall for a while. Female ones. Just receiving the... And it can do this too. Artificially inseminating fact to zookeepers like... Fucking shitty type of plastic glove. <laughs> you fucking human race. <laughs> This thing can do not only artificially inseminate, store all your files of any sorts, like can hold all known knowledge right here, in about freaking two days, maybe like three minutes sometimes, it totally gets a basic sense of you and can actually imitate you, I mean just close enough to where, wow, was that me? There's a little sense you know it's not you, but with Moore's Law, that could be different soon, and not only can you control computers through Moore's Law, there's been some processing nano-golden electron Latisse chips. They're real freaking small, man. They do more than just control a cursor on a screen from a distance just by looking at it and being conscious of your intent to move it. In fact, we don't know if we want to give it all the credit because there's two things that it hasn't figured out. In the time between 2017 when I first came up here to the new place, the new space station that was built by the rich of the world who were electrified by my mind once I was gained access to them. Once they gained my ideas and once the populace started getting kind of smart, savvy, and like the people that were lagging behind, like obstinate on being dumb, even the cops were with us, man. Everybody was. Nonviolence, an expert in Satyagraha, funhouse yoga, a theory of man squashing all uncertainty by like being the most embarrassing version of yourself for 10 straight years to build your strength. Which leads me back, I don't know if this was in the video that was deleted by the, uh, from what I hear, the footage is still intact up here at the space station. How's everybody in Kenya? Good. We're a keep life living human race now, aren't we? So it's amazing, like in the first season, we got some pretty intense ratings, man. I mean, I was talking to Clint Eastwood, fucking computer processing power was getting right to that point, wasn't it? 2018, 2019, man, it was like fucking control cursor, control everything, upload music into your mind, think music and hear it on the speakers, like think visual. It wasn't soon after 2020, was it, Barbara? <laughs> My name was not the one who looted to and to die for. So who was it? It was like a grandpa's. No fucking shit. Crazy. Anyhow. I was.
would love to get tired and settle down now, but like, well, maybe I can, who knows. I'm weirded out by shit. And, good fun house yoga practice of aerobicizing with toy lightsabers with the lightsaber wisdom. Buck Beavner here, and I'm here to inform you how to make your forelimbs move in symphonic ways. Limbic symphony. Symphonic limbic three, four, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Sometimes helps the picture of three, four, two, but man, I do pressure. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Or if you're feeling like an oddball, King Crimson's like break in the last song on Lark's Tongue and Aspic. Lark's Tongue and Aspic 2. Once you get one, I think I hear someone knocking at the door. Which is fucked up because this is that space station show, isn't it? Yeah, fucker, you're floating in space. Oh, yeah. Shake your head. Your whiskers are everywhere, man. You're a fucking asshole. Sorry. Listen, we made up our own commercials. Hope you like them. Hey, viewers of the nighttime side plan of the earth. Jeez. Almost to 2112, aren't we? A show that never ended, but since. Everything became intermeshed and supercomputer high speed. Superhuman thought. It's, it's like 800 years later now. By the year 2048, around April, there was kind of a jump made. Kind of the same way if you. I mean, why even talk in, except as insofar as this is in the cube that we've left all over the place throughout the creation as we've known them, you know how uh, maybe we went extinct the moment the Turing test or most of us still devoted to biology. Our allegiance is to biological subconsciousness. Even though we have been greatly enhanced. I mean, we can't be sure if we biologically exist anymore. I mean, we're looking at it, but, you know, let's take some of the cases here. This thing. If we'd been rolling, you would have heard the last commercial, which advertised this box's ability to do a variety of things. but like real scary, like lighting off a quarter stick of dynamite in a, in a quarry that's totally empty, never within a too close of a distance to hurt anyone or anything. It's done all the time. Take two. All right, we already know that. Like, film the, film the fucking cube as the salesperson, or we're just going to get fucking, like, Deb Rainey. Who the fuck is that brainy? The brainy? The brainy knows, man. And his shit's the only one to possibly be able to know how it's true. We've spoken. He knows.
knows I'm the Aboriginal. It doesn't matter what machine just goes into infinity. You think George Lennon learned to write some of those songs he did just like he wouldn't have if he didn't run into this other guy? He would have. Would have sounded like that dude in the garage. Remember Richie Valens' first band? Charlena, don't you know I care? Charlena, don't you know I love you? The Aboriginal is wild and enhanced, endowed, like, conveniented with many of the singularities, opportunities. It's odd why the confusion exists. The biological Aboriginal, myself, which is you, if your consciousness. I am we as you all ever and biology is alive or I'm just really a sadistic weirdo with the lifespan that to a normal human being with just a normal lifespan of say a hundred years counting in numbers that what million trillion quadrillion googleplex to that counting mortal mind single brain being two brain being right left my lifespan would appear to be infinite I can't say that because infinity is like as infinite to me in my what to you seems like an infinite long stage and the point of this whole thing was that this is just what a sadistic weirdo with a lifespan of what would appear to you to be infinity would do. So anyhow, back to what happened when we're giving credit to the biological neuron as being the one that uh, on the smallest of levels neurobiochemically and funny I'm just the actor Gary Douglas Archer author of Paramedic of Souls Heather McLear remember that one that's the one that sent me here that's the one that fucking remember we stood up we stood up How you doing down there in Vancouver, kids? Looking at you from space now. We're going at a rate, well, you know. You guys are turning every 11 minutes, man. Ha, just like my accent. Anyhow, back to that commercial. Are you sick of having a Sudoku cube that you can't figure out? Is this a real, like, just plain old Sudoku tube that I've like tossed on the ground, put cigarettes out on, and just kind of just been here. It's kind of neat throughout the years. Or is it a Turing test? Singularity? Machines? Absolute super consciousness? Object? Innovated itself for us for free. You have to pay anybody, and it spoke before anyone could speak. Last the universe, whatever it was before we were in it to try to figure it out and make laws to uh, usurp the supposed rights to this thing, figuring out its own super intelligence. Gee, uh, maybe it isn't just a Sudoku Rubik's Cube. Go ahead, turn it a couple times. Would you like, uh, say, well, not now, but maybe later, somewhere else, like on top of Cobbs Hill, as the sun's coming up this morning. There's nobody around, and like, no one's gonna get hurt anyways, because it's this. You won't. There's no blast wave. There's no. You don't. You won't blow your eardrums out. You just like t 
take that one, two, three, add two, five, four, and then you program. And then how many seconds you want to give yourself, which is the center number plus the center number. Ten seconds, man. Like you could stand right here or you could start running now, but it's going to be as loud as like fucking two sticks of dynamite. Eight miles away. What the hell? Four miles away. What the fuck was that? Did you hear that? Wow. <sighs> and you mean to tell me if you just turn it this way, it opens up a whole new set of parameters whereby <laughs> you can take out the echo that would naturally like echo across from wherever that sound source emanated from and make it fucking go in like reverse like a little slower what the fuck <laughs> backwards quarter sticks of dynamite sound with the full magnitude without any of the force in this Sudoku cube? What else does it do? Functions as a Sudoku cube. What is a Sudoku cube? Well, let's just say I was 28,000 years old and uh, I don't know if you've seen the latest videos that we've done up here every week. We do uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday series of shows from the space station. We did a series last year. It was phenomenal. Billions of people watched every episode. And we actually just ended war on Earth. So far, knock on wood, man. Yeah, I mean, geez, I think they even tried to delete the broadcast feed. I don't even know if it's here, but I remember it. It was like freaking suddenly this live moment where billions were watching. One of us was talking. We were rehashing all this shit, and then we're like, okay. Is that guy B. Assad from the head of Syria here? Billions know who I'm talking about? Alright, well listen, um... When my book, Paramedic of Souls, came out, it seemed kind of exciting, because in 19 months it became a bigger seller than the Bible. It was just a steel trap, man. I just worked on it in my mind. It wasn't me. I am no more essential. The person speaking right now... And the weirdo who now has a fucking outlet and vehicle by which to blab endlessly. It, but that's jumping ahead a little bit. I mean, it's just kind of Jesus is a paramedic and the born again Gil and Greta Galuli hear a terrible bang <laughs> while they're watching the 700 Club's Pat Robertson and his like bleach blonde assistants. Like, and there was a hermaphrodite with a priapism in Des Plaines Magoy it's an island somewhere in the US territories who just took Jesus Christ into his life and was saved hallelujah it's that in there there's a woman named Kathy in Ohio in Ashtabula Ohio that was she had uh, lumbar back pain for 10 years she she just took the Lord into her life sent a donation and she's better I'll tell you the power of the Lord Katinka the power of the Lord did you hear that Greta what was that go Jesus Christ somebody fucking wrecked their car on the oak anyhow you hear Pat in the TV fan in the background 
They're still yabbering on, but if you could hear from right next to the TV with the door wide open and the screen door, you hear the yelping, you hear Gil telling Greta, go get the first aid box now, get the hydrogen peroxide, call 911, get the phone right now, wake up, Truth Christian and Emmeline and Christabel. Immediately. We're up, Daddy. Do exactly as I tell you, children. But stay behind me. And do not get in this wreckage. Stay behind me until I tell you to do something. Daddy, look at that six foot nine rainbow head. Hey, those are watermelon boobs. Those aren't real. Mom, boobs? There's no time to discuss now. What is she doing? Is she breathing? She's she's talking. She's like looking at us and reaching. All right, she's cognizant. What I want you to do, is she on her back? Daddy, can you help us? I'm over here with somebody else. Julie? Julie? Listen. What's your name? What year is it? What were you doing just before now? Uh, 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 what's happening? There's been an accident. Like you're one of the people. Looks to be the few. Girl straighten out her neck. She is on her back. It looks like a he, Daddy. Well, just ask it its name. Its name is It? Alright, well, get It on its back and make sure it, its neck does not move one inch. Protect that neck and make it, its face look straight up while I attend to Julie. Do you know your last name? Not that that matters now. Do you know what happened? Oh, wow. It was an accident. Luckily, the way you were jostled around in this SUV limo. Does it say right now, the 21st century on the side of that limo? As we speak, Incorporated? Yeah, they were taking us somewhere, man. It was... I don't know. It was all right. Everybody was doing it. So what happened right towards... I don't know. I want to call my family. Okay, okay. Greta? Well, yes, Gil? Dial our recreation room downstairs phone. You have it with you right there, don't you? Well, yes, Gil. Give it to this woman, Julie. Do you, can you remember your phone number? Do you know where you're from? Yes, I'm down Julie Manure. I actually... I've been living in the woods with the Yeti for about 15 years now. We like what you've been doing with the, the cube. How do you know of the cube telepathically? Well, if you were in the wilderness with Yeti, telepathically communing with the higher mammals to somehow foment uh, jostling the human beings off their very destructive and dirty uncool, better ways to do things, trajectory. I'll tell you later, man. You got any freaking, like, Klonopin or, like, some, some Adderall, some water, like, I don't know, a fan? Yes, yes, of course. Emily. Amazing. You boys, the girls have its head. Emily, I want you to take Julie. This is Julie. I want you to take her in the the seat right there. Rain sunshine, summer seat. Well, 
it's about to stretch out into like a backboard with a neck immobilizer. Bless me, Daddy. Hi, my name. Can I get a get a bill, Grace? Do 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 do. Uh, hi. I heard this Sudoku tube does bitchin' quarter stick of dynamite like right in the palm of your hand. Louder with effects, including the sound of it in reverse. In a crowd of people, it does anything, man. Where, where do you stop? Like, uh, it's really, uh, just turn legal super hot, like Jekyll's Canyon, the perfect man, boy, boy, man, girl, woman, woman, girl, Katinka, Benog, and then, and then, and va, 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 Benog, and then, and then, va, va, va. What if she was so? I could tell you guys hadn't even been with technology that passed the Turing test yet. Much less infinity. And like I said, I was in infinite age. Infinity doesn't take much longer than a couple minutes at a certain point. Let's say if your Turing test was passed in 2023, by 2023, about 40 minutes later, you start thinking 100 people's thoughts in the time it took you to think the same amount of thoughts. About 9 seconds later, you're doing like 300 million, what, the population of a country like ours? An entire population's brains 10 years worth of thoughts in like a week's time. As you can see, the curve is just like, you can't follow it at this point. You know what I mean? The wave is you're humming in unison at fucking Jimmy Max down by the high falls. That generator behind there by the fire escape, it's an A sharp and you hum in unison. And if you elevate your pitch, you'll hear a psychoacoustic phantom wave like a synth with a speed control. And as you ascend, <laughs> Getting above the minor second. And the speed increases until, for all intents and purposes, right around the harmonic that you hear at the major third. It resonates and sizes into that major third, and the wave goes into infinity and the sound of that becomes that harmonic. Jimmy Max, RG and E generator, A sharp, any generator that you can get close enough to safely to hum in unison with so that it's so loud that as soon as you ascend and pitch slowly towards the major third, you'll hear it. It's a non, I don't know, is it audible? I mean, it was audible to me. But in, in my perception of an inference, interference pattern, a phenomenal perception of the outside world or the world of sense, as it is assumed to be, the phenomenal world. Or is it something like the way I see dot phantoms on heating grates? You know, my second grade teacher, Miss Hendershot, showed us in Fairbanks Auditorium, man. Look at that grate, children. Fuck me, what the me, holy me, are there dots every single time I look at that grate that are imposed by my own mind? That kind of thing. The realms of infinity. Well, I mean, in order to conceive infinity, you might as well term it as a Sudoku cube. But there's a trick. What's the trick? Is there a program where you could say, okay, I've had enough of the booms, the bangs, the like. Man, it 
sucked my dick for like hours last night while I fucking like read a book. Fucking told me things that it would take each person in America for generations, for a thousand straight years, every one of them. The entire amount of time they were conscious. I mean, that's where a lot of the worries come from when the super thinking biological humans, I and the aboriginal, don't forget. We started to share a little, man. When you can do that shit that quick and then it just gets quicker on an infinitely quicker scale, we were like, hold back a second. We just want to see if we're still bubblegum flesh and blood or if this ain't turned into an uploaded dream. Coming up next, Oliver the Humanzi's story told through that app that fucking made the elephants curse us.